Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the uh, Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. We discuss pro wrestling all points in between. Uh, this is the SmackDown review for the 15th of July. Can't believe this is a national television program, but it is what it is. Pat McCaffrey opens the show. Michael Cole standing in the ring welcoming everybody to SmackDown and welcoming uh, McCaffrey to the ring. McCaffrey comes out the ring in, uh, without a neck brace. He notes he's happy to be in Orlando. He apologizes for the fans having to listen to Corey Graves last week. Uh, he then we see um, Happy Corbin attacking McCaffrey from the Money in the Bank deal. Um, Corbin and Graves mock McCaffrey by dancing to Nakamura's music. McCaffrey mentions knowing Corbin before they were in WWE, claimed Corbin was humble and hardworking, and he changed. McCaffrey notes this isn't uh, the... Uh, show isn't TV 14 yet. He promises to beat Corbin at SummerSlam. Uh, Corbin interrupts big screen. He tells McCaffrey to get back behind the commentary table where he belongs. Corbin then adds that he's a fighter. And McCaffrey used to punt footballs. He claimed that he could uh, get a rash from sitting in the commentary last week from McCaffrey somehow. This is just stupid. McCaffrey said Corbin faked uh, monkeypox. He says he's going to see him at SummerSlam. McCaffrey then felt it's time to move on and introduced the women's champion, Liv Morgan. Uh, championship contenders match. Liv Morgan defeats Natalia 9-16. Not a bad match. Uh, rough in some spots, but it's just because they don't really gel that well. Morgan takes out her opponent with a dropkick and scores series of nearest falls. Natalia then fights back and comes up with a sharpshooter on the apron. Morgan then escapes and goes for the oblivion, but Natalia blocks it, and then she gives Morgan a slingshot into the ring post uh, back from the break. Natalia then hits Morgan with a with a backbreaker submission. Morgan breaks free and hits a missile drop kick. Morgan then does a kick up and runs wild on Natalia. Natalia then recovers and hits a release German suplex for a near fall. Not bad, but again, I don't think they needed nine minutes. Six probably could have done it. They struggled on the top rope until Morgan slips out. Natalia gets back to her feet and hits a sit-out powerbomb for near fall. She locks on the ankle lock, but Morgan breaks it up. Hits the Oblivion for the win. After the match, Braxton interviews Morgan in the ring. Braxton notes Rousey had more dominant win over Natalia last week. Fans boo, and Morgan admits she's an underdog going into SummerSlam, and, but perhaps she can re retain the title in the back. Megan interviews Theory. Theory admits that he's lost lots of enemies, including Bobby Lashley and Dolph Ziggler. Paul Heyman interrupts. Heyman points out that he's responsible for the biggest break in Theory's career. Heyman then tries to convince Theory not to cash in at SummerSlam. Instead, Heyman wants him to work with Theory. He wants to schedule a title match with Roman Reigns at a later date. And Heyman added, well, all Theory has to do is not cash in and let him handle everything. Theory thanked him, but said he's cashing in against Roman or Brock at SummerSlam. Uh, New Day segment. It's fine. Shanky and Jinder Mahal set the trap, and the Raiders and New Day were passable in the segment. Viking Raiders music hit, but New Day comes out instead. Kofi and Xavier come out dressed like the Viking Raiders, basically a comedy thing trying to recapture the nation and DX. Uh, back from the break, they recap the Viking Raiders uh, beating down Jinder Mahal. Shanky then goes after the New Day. New Day makes fun of the Raiders. Kingston points out that Wood sounds like he doesn't belong here. New Vicious Viking Raiders music hit, and they walk out onto the stage. New Day screamed that they were imposters. Uh, Raiders promise to break the New Day. New Day makes fun of Raiders, and Wood says they're ugly. Uh, is this, like, meant for... First graders? Anyway, uh, the Viking Raiders had heard enough and started to walk into the ring. Woods pulls off a horn. Mahal and Shanky jump the Raiders. The Viking Raiders take off as the New Day and Shanky danced around, and Mahal hit the ring. Cole claimed the Raiders fell for New Day, Mahal, and Shanky's trap. Um, in the back, Caleb Braxton interviews Gunther and Ludwig Kaiser. Uh, they recap Kaiser's losing losing to Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura last week. Gunther chops Kaiser. Gunther won't tolerate failure. Braxton announced that Kaiser has taken on Nakamura in a rematch next week. Gunther yelled at Kaiser to take off his jacket. Gunther then gave Kaiser a chop and left Braxton shocked. 
Lacey Evans and Aaliyah didn't even have a match. Evans cuts a promo and walks out. Um, and she gets booze and a what chant. Evans mentioned serving your country and fans break into a loud you suck chant. So that's apparently not getting anywhere. Evans claims she felt terrible for offending the fans. She tried to apologize, but the fans wouldn't accept. She told them to go to hell and walked out of the ring. And this is a complete waste of time. The recap. Uh, Drew McIntyre defeating Butch last week. Drew McIntyre this week defeats um, Ridge Holland with the Brawling Brutes 324. Ooh, um, how, how the mighty have fallen with Drew McIntyre basically in a throwaway match. McIntyre and Holland have a decent enough contest for three minutes if you can even have a good match in three minutes clash of the castle and then Seamus erupts Samantha Irvin announced that Ridge Holland uh, is in control instead Cole and McCaffrey are confused which jumped out of the ring and rang the bell uh, McIntyre is firmly in control and hits uh, beats of Braden uh, locks uh, he looks right at Seamus and calls him out Holland Slows the pace down with a chin lock. McIntyre breaks free and goes nuts. Sets up the Claymore kick, but Butch interferes. McIntyre recovers with a white noise while looking at Sheamus. Cole thinks McIntyre does it better. McIntyre then hits the Claymore kick for the win. Basically, they're building to Sheamus and McIntyre for probably the international show or something. Although, wasn't he supposed to face the winner of Brock and... and um, Roman at that point, Theory walks out to the ring before his match with Madcap Moss. Uh, in the back, Megan interviews Madcap Moss behind the curtain. Call, Paul Heyman interrupts. Heyman points out that he's responsible for the biggest break in Moss's career. He adds that Theory cashing in at SummerSlam would be bad for business. Heyman notes that Moss injured Happy Corbin a few weeks ago. He tries to convince Moss to hurt Theory tonight. Heyman then proposed Moss schedule title shot against Roman Reigns. Theory get, if Theory gets injured, Moss then responded to Heyman, seems very worried about Theory cashing at SummerSlam. Moss makes his entrance, and they go off to commercial. The only thing that's really enjoyable about this is Paul Heyman's work. Heyman's always great. The rest of this is just trash. Back from the break, they show Maxim Male Models video package. They debuted the Beachwear 2022 collection. Next week, Max Dupree's sisters, Maxine Dupree debuts. What? Anyway... Uh, Madcap Moss defeats Theory 11.55 by DQ. How sad. Anyway, um, I just, the Madcap Moss thing does nothing for me. Moss and Theory have a decent enough match. Uh, weak finish. Cole pushes that this match between two, two men is the future of the WWE. In that case, I probably should stop watching. Theory is great. Moss is not. Theory is in brief control. Shoulder tackle goes for the leapfrog, but Mo Moss catches him. Uh, Moss catches Theory, but nearly drops him. So how about actually learning to work instead of just high spots? Uh, they fight around ringside on the outside. Moss uh, charge Theory, but then avoids Moss with a leapfrog. Moss then crashes hard into the ring steps. Uh, back from the break, Theory hits a rolling drop kick for near fall. Theory takes over with a chin lock, slowing the pace down. Moss then fights up. And nails Theory with the shoulder tackles. He finishes that series off. Then Theory tries to fight back, but Moss hits a spine buster for a close near fall. Theory stomps on Moss's leg and then back suplex for a near fall. The fans break into a Theory sucks chant. Uh, Theory then goes for another rolling drop kick. Moss then fights back and rocks Theory with a shoulder tackle. Sending him out of the ring, Moss goes away after Theory. Theory grabs the briefcase and hits Moss for the disqualification. After the match, Theory promises... To be the next Undisputed Universal Champion, Sami Zayn interrupts with the arm in a sling. Zayn then notes that Theory is insulting the bloodline by claiming that he would win the title. Zayn then demands Theory apologize. Theory then mocks Zayn and uh, points out that his he has his arm in a sling. Uso's music hits and big reaction. Theory runs to the back, but Moss jumps him and sends him into things. Angelo Dawkins with Montez Ford defeats Jimmy Uso. Um, seven minutes. I guess this is fine enough, but this, uh, I'm sorry, Dawkins in the main event, and to be fair, the, uh, the Usos in the main event just feel stale to me. They announced that Jeff Jarrett the, is the, um, special referee for the SummerSlam Usos and Street Profits title match. Why? Anyway, Dawkins and Jimmy have a decent enough match. Um, they do the controversial 
heel has one shoulder up at the finish. Uh, Sammy Jane, Sammy Zane joins Cole and McCaffrey on commentary. He's pretty good at that. Uh, Jimmy has a brief advantage, sends Dawkins to ringside. Jimmy sets up a dive, but Dawkins cuts him off. Dawkins then tackles Jimmy over the barricade. Uh, back from the break, Jimmy finally is in control and hits the Rikishi splash. Dawkins then recovers quickly and rocks Jimmy with the right hand. Dawkins then fires up, hitting a flying elbow, following a twisting neckbreaker for a near fall. Jimmy then tries to interfere, but Dawkins knocks him off the apron. Jimmy then collides with the referee. Jimmy hits a super kick and then has a match one. Robinson's still down. Jimmy yells at Robinson to get up. Dawkins recovers and hits a sit-out powerbomb for the win. Controversial uh, finish since one of the shoulders is up. This is in Street Profits Brawl to end SmackDown. Can't believe this is national television in 2022, but again... People's standards have fallen, and obviously writing decent stories has also fallen. We'll be back with more right after this.